Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another edition of Rock's Garage. I'm your host, Dan, and on today's episode, we're gonna be installing the T3 turn signal option on our Yamaha Drive 2. Now, previously we installed the LGT-401L kit on the Drive 2, and today we're gonna be installing the T3 turn signal option. So if you were to order a build your own kit and you ordered the T3 turn signal option, this would be the installation video for you. So before we go ahead and get started, let's take a look at what comes in that kit and the tools we're gonna need to perform the installation. So when you open up your T3 kit, you're gonna have the deluxe turn signal itself, which has the horn button, as well as your headlights and high-low switch built into it. You're also going to have your mounting hardware to mount the turn signal to the steering column, and you're also going to have your turn signal relay. After that, you're gonna have the steering column cover. Now this is a universal product, so we're probably gonna to have to trim that a little later on, and we'll get into that in a second. After that, we have the LGT590 jumper. And this is gonna go in place of our push-pull switch. Then after that, we have the setup for the horn. So we have the horn harness and the hardware to mount the horn as well as the horn itself. And lastly, we have a 12-volt outlet. So now that we've taken a look at all the parts that come in the kit, let's take a look at the tools we're gonna to need to get the job done. First up, we have a socket wrench with a number three hex and an 11 millimeter socket. We also have an 11 millimeter wrench, a flathead screwdriver, and a Phillips head screwdriver. And lastly, we have a tape measure, a marking tool, and a utility knife. Now that we've taken a look at all the tools, we just wanna go over a few safety precautions before we get started. So first, we're gonna turn our cart off, then we're gonna set our parking brake, and if we have an electric cart, we're gonna flip the tow run switch to the tow position. Once those three things are done, we're also going to disconnect our battery. Now that our battery is disconnected, we're gonna go ahead and mock up the location for our turn signal on our steering column. Now, in order to mount our turn signal to our steering column, we need to use one of the three provided steering column spacers. So I'm gonna use the medium size one. There's a small, a medium, and a large size spacer. I'm gonna use the medium one, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the collar just like this. There is a little lip on it that would go around the edge of the collar. Then I'm gonna take my turn signal and mount it up against the steering column. Now this position does not have to be 100% accurate right now as we are going to need to move this a little bit to get the turn signal connected to the harness. And then you're gonna take your collar and put it around the steering column and take your provided hardware and screw it into place. And like I said, we don't need to crank this all the way down, but we do want to have it be able to support itself. So now that my turn signal is mounted to the steering column, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my cup holders and the boot that's at the bottom of the steering column so that I can gain access to my turn signal harness. Now when you're removing the cup holders, all you need to do is pry up the Yamaha logo that is on the cup holders, and then underneath of there, there is a number three hex head bolt that you remove, and then the whole cup holder unit will come out as one. Now that I have my cup holders and my boot removed, I need to make a small incision in the boot so that I can get my turn signal harness to run where I need to make the connection underneath of where the cup holders sit. So I'm gonna take my utility knife and make a small slot on the left side of the boot so that I can wrap this around the harness. Now I'm also gonna cut out a little bit of material here to allow this boot to sit flush with the harness underneath of it. So underneath of our cup holders, behind our dash, we're gonna make a few connections. First, we're gonna take our nine pin jumper off of our harness and then plug in the turn signal that we just had. And we also wanna make sure that we connect our connector for our high low switch. as well as plug in our blue turn signal relay. And then lastly, we're gonna take our push-pull connector and we're gonna remove that and install our LGT590 relay. Now 
Now we're gonna secure any loose wires with zip ties and then we can go ahead and reinstall our cup holders. So before we install our steering column cover, we need to measure the distance that we're gonna to need to trim that cover. So before we do that, we need to make sure that we measure from the top of the boot all the way up to the back of the turn signal on our steering column and then transfer that measurement over onto the steering column cover. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and trim off any of the excess and install the cover. So I'm gonna trim that at 15 and a quarter. Now that our steering column cover has been measured and trimmed, we can go ahead and install that on the cart. So now that we have everything installed for our turn signal, we're going to go ahead and move forward and install our horn. Now there are a couple holes in the frame underneath of the cart that we're going to be able to use to mount our horn. And then once we've mounted the horn, we can go ahead and connect it to the main light kit harness. So underneath of the cart, there is a cross member that runs in between the two upper shock mounts, and there are a few holes drilled in that. So I'm going to use one of those holes that's drilled in that cross member to mount my horn. So I'm going to put my hardware through first, and then mount my horn from the back side so that the horn faces forward. Now when you're mounting your horn, it doesn't really matter where you put it, but you do want to make sure that the horn faces forward so that the sound from the horn also goes forward. So now that I have the horn loosely installed, I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down before I install the harness. Now that our horn is installed on the cart, we can go ahead and connect it to the harness. Now the harness with the white plug only plugs in one way to the light kit harness, and then on the opposite end of that harness where the terminals plug in, it really doesn't matter which way you plug those in, either way will work. So I'm going to go ahead and plug my harness in and secure it out of the way of any moving parts. So now that our horn is reinstalled, we can go ahead and reconnect our battery. Once that's done, we can go through the kit and verify that everything works properly. Once we verify that everything works properly, that's going to complete the installation for the LG T-T3 in conjunction with the LG T-401L on our Yamaha Drive 2. Thanks for watching this episode of Rock's Garage, and I'll see you guys next time.